Hey, cool beans and cool witches. Welcome back to Slightly Obsessed TV Edition, where I obsess with you. Yes, with you, because I know I'm not alone. Over the unnecessary details, fan Easter eggs, and inconsistencies on classic TV sitcoms. By the way, let me know your favorite binge worthy, worthy sitcoms below, um, any that you watch or think that I should watch. Now, I still want to add, there's no confusion. I do understand the difference between location, exterior shots, and on-set filming locations. This is just unnecessary obsessions with why sometimes the sets don't match up with the exterior shots. Only because sometimes it wouldn't make a difference, like the number of windows, which we're going to get into with the King of Queens. Another set piece aside from the windows, is also the front porch situation that I talked about last time, where they often have characters exiting to the side, when we've clearly seen scenes of them using the set front porch and exiting towards the front. But let's get into some filming inconsistencies. We see on the location home that there are two windows separated by a brick with a regular slanted front window, a front roof, but in the episode where Carrie and Doug get into it with the sack skis, at the end, we see Carrie sunbathing on a part of the roof that's fairly flat and Doug accessing it through an attic hatch, which would be particularly probably that missing dormer. However, their attic doesn't have windows and does not have that attic dormer area. Their bedroom also only has three windows close together with the bed in front of it. And we'll get to why that makes a difference later. But in the episodes dealing with the attic where Ray and Deborah Barone come over for dinner and Doug gets stuck in the attic, he's accessing the attic through Carrie's closet. And we can tell that that's flanking the front of the house based on other scenes with the window and also with them referencing the fire department and Richie coming, coming um, to rescue them. But in the episode where Doug and Doug ends up walking the Saxkey's dog because he keeps barking too much we see Doug and Carrie complaining out that front window about the dog barking. But in another episode where she catches Doug lying about an answering machine message, she goes to the backyard and hits the fence to make a dog bark, a different dog. This is Pepper, another neighbor's dog. But we clearly see there's no side fence, no side gate. So a dog would most likely be in the back. But they're both yelling out the front of the house. And we know this is the front because in the block, bus, block party episode, they're looking out the front at the street block party. And in this episode, they're yelling at the dog as if the dog is out front when there's no fencing. There's no nothing out front. So they're just saying the, the Saxkey's dog is just out there, just running free. Keeping with the Saxkey storyline, when the Saxkeys come over to announce their divorce and give the Heffernans their keys and parking pass to the Hamptons and Richie ends up dating Dorothy and she gets obsessed with him. This window right over her vanity is on the side between their two homes and Carrie actually leans out this window when Dorothy throws curlers over to get her attention so that she can talk about Richie and if he really likes her. And we can see from the rest of the scenes in this house where they move on the side here and the stairwell that... These are on the sides of their house, between their neighbor's house. And so we also can tell that, that, that the bedroom faces the front. These windows are on the side of the house. And therefore, the office window is facing the backyard and the big garage that the Keffernans have. So the inconsistency comes... When Doug and Carrie are arguing and she keeps closing windows to keep her, the other neighbors, the doctor and the lawyer, I believe, from hearing them, she closes the bedroom window, that window that she talked to Dorothy Saxkey with through the hallway window where the stairs are, we know should still be on that side. The bathroom window, which she also closes, is also on that side of the house. So that means that this window in the office should be on the back of the house. However, when they do this scene, and I believe one of the scenes, the neighbor sneezed so she knew that the window was open, um, and they also hear the husband and wife talking to each other, that if that was the back of the house, how would Carrie have heard them clearly, unless they were moving through their own 
house. Maybe they heard them through their back windows, but it was so perfectly close and clear. Either the neighbors would have had to have rushed outside to do the next um, bit of dialogue or they just are pretending as if this part of the house is interchangeably to the side. And the last bit of unnecessary details has to do with the hallway feature and the bathroom. We know that the upstairs on the Heffernan's house consists of Doug and Carrie's bedroom, the office right across from it, and then the bathroom next to the office. We've seen that in many episodes where they go in that bathroom. But in this clip, we can see that on the other side of that bathroom is a door where in the previous clip I showed where she's pushing Doug down the stairs, the door behind her is the bathroom and then there's the stairs. Now, this is probably just due to not wanting to have an open area behind the set piece, but I just thought it was rather weird that they've got all these interchanging doors in different areas when this is supposed to be just uh, an upstairs with three different rooms. But now when we look through the bathroom, there's a door across from the bathroom instead of the stairs. Another thing I love about the King of Queens is how they reuse characters over and over. Um, great for actors who are in the business, but I love it. Even using the entire Stiller family and using the real life spouses of Leah Remini and Kevin James in a lot of the episodes. And here, this girl uh, in the blue sweater is playing with another character, another couple for a flashback episode when Doug and Carrie first find this house. And she is later also a friend of Carrie's at the law firm and at the real estate law firm that Carrie works at as another secretary. I forget her name. I think she plays Lisa. So this was just another little Easter egg when we see characters we've already seen elsewhere. And then they come back in another role as if Nobody knows who they are or what they look like. That's happened so many times, but I think it's awesome. And it just shows how this is a great set for people to work on and continue to stay with. Well, once again, Cool Beans and Cool Witches, we've come to the end of another slightly obsessed, maybe unnecessary video, but I know it's fun for fans of TV watching, even movies, where we just love to find these little things that just resonate and things that we notice after watching our favorite shows for a long time, even as we've gotten older, especially the Golden Girls. That's the reason I started this, but I'm going to take a deep dive into those later. But I hope you come back. I hope you give it a like. I hope you share it. I hope you comment. Just let me know your obsessions. And if you don't, just blow it out your tube and burbles.